Okay, going to show you the pagan origins of the Roman Catholic practice of purgatory and prayers to dead people. This comes from paganism because, of course, Roman Catholicism and the whole Jesuit order are steeped in paganism. All they are, this is covered in Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons. Very good book showing that the Catholic Church is just simply pagan religions from various antiquities, Egypt, Assyria, China, various parts of Europe, just pagan antiquities repackaged. And a lot of their practices come from pagan and occult religions. But I'm going to show you some scripture first, because, of course, praying to dead, dead people is a sin. It's necromancy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh a son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. Hello, Catholic priests, praying to your saints or a wizard or a necromancer okay necromancy is a sin and you want some more proof on that to search up hosts oops hosts of heaven uh oops wrong s there uh deuteronomy chapter four I'll start at verse 15. Take ye, therefore, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the... What the? I'm oh, sorry about that. My mouse must have messed up again. Uh, anyway. Uh, take ye therefore, take heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude unto the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image the similitude of any figure the likeness of male or female sorry little icons and statues of saints and statues of mary don't work your pictures of jesus don't work you don't have to have any graven image of any figure male or female i mean look how blatantly obvious blatantly blunt god is here not to have any image of any likeness of you know he's like making it very clear do not have any images you know likeness of male or female sorry your mary statues and your icons don't work the likeness of male or female. Verse 17. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Sorry to you all your uh, Catholic idols of the Holy Ghost, which is depicted as a dove. Likeness of any beast on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Again, sorry for your pictures of the Holy Ghost depicting him, depicting him, depicting him as a dove. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Lest thou lift thine eyes unto heaven, and thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and even all the hosts of heaven, shouldst thou be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So, praying to the hosts of heaven is a sin too, which are angels, and spirits, and people in heaven, basically, and you know cherubs, and other creatures too. So, Roman Catholicism is in violation of so many scriptures. But I'm going to read you from The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, showing how the Jesuits and the Catholics are just simply following pagan religions from various antiquities repackaged. So this is uh, uh, chapter 4, section number uh, 5, basically. And this is on basically purgatory and basically prayers for dead people, which is purely pagan. So it says here, and basically, what the book goes through is the, is the book goes goes through different Catholic practices and shows how many pagan religions were teaching those exact same practices. So, and we're going to see this with the uh, prayers for the dead in purgatory. So it says, again, this is chapter four, section number five. Uh, quote: Extreme unction, however, to a burdened soul, was but a miserable resource. After all, in the prospect of death, no wonder, therefore, that something else was found to be needed by those who had received. All that priestly assumption could pretend to confer, uh, to comfort them in the prospect of eternity. In every system, therefore, except that of the Bible, every system, every pagan religion, every uh, pagan religion that Catholicism is just repackaged, this can be found. However, it's not found in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, except that of the Bible, the doctrine of purgatory after death and prayers for the dead have always been found to occupy a place. Go wherever we may in ancient times or modern times. We shall find that paganism leaves uh, hope for the dead, ho hope after death for sinners, uh, who at the time of their departure were consciously unfit uh, for their abodes of the blessed. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm sorry, I do apologize. Just had to let my cat in. He, my uh, cat named Boa, 
he wanted to come in, so I had to just, he was like clawing in the door and meowing, so anyway, uh, you know, cats will be cats, but uh, yeah, so it says, uh, so the thing of purgatory, so paganism, it says, um, leaves hope for death for after death for sinners who at the time of their departure were consciously unfit for the abodes of the blessed. Uh, for this purpose, in the middle of in the, a middle state has been figured, in which by means of purgatorial pains, guilt unremoved in time may in a, may in a future world be purged away, and the soul may be meet for final beatitude. In Greece, the doctrine of purgatory was uh, in, inculcated. Not good at reading on a computer screen. By the very chief of the philosophers, thus Plato, speaking a future judgment of the dead, holds out hope for the final deliverance of all. But maintains that quote, uh, sorry those quote, sorry uh, that of quote, those who are judged and quote some must quote first proceed, sorry must first quote proceed to a subterranean place of judgment where they shall sustain all the punishment that they have that they have deserved unquote. While others, in consequence uh, of a favorable judgment, being elevated to once. At, elevated at once to a certain celestial place, quote, shall pass their time in a manner becoming the life that they, that they lived in a human shape, unquote. So basically what they're saying is that basically how you live on earth, the works, the good works you do, if you sin too much, if you live a holy life, then the life, your afterlife will basically be you living your life on earth, essentially. As, that, that, that is the base of what they're saying. You know, there's some differences to it, but... Uh, it says in pagan Rome, purgatory was equally held up before the minds of men, but there seems to have been no hope laid out for, uh, to any of the exception, uh, any of exemption from its pains. Therefore, Vigoral, Vigoral, describing it as different tortures, thus speaks, and this is what he's saying about purgatory, or like what the pagan Roman version of purgatory is. Quote, nor can the groveling mind in the dark of the in the dark dungeon of limbs. Of the, of the limbs confined, ass, assessed the, na the native skies or own or own its heavenly kind, nor death itself can wholly wash their, their stains, but long contracted filth, even in soul remains, the relic of, hmm, relics, kind of like Catholics have relics, of inverted, inverted vice they wear, the spots of sin obscene in every uh, face appear, for this they for this are various penances enjoined, and some are hung to bleach upon the wind. Some plunge in the water, other purged, others purge in fires, till all the de the dregs are drained, and all the rust expires. All have their means, and those means bear. The few so cleanse to the abode repair. The breathe in ample the breathe and breathe in ample fields the soft Elysian air, Elysian air, whatever. Uh, they. There then are they happy, but when by length of time the scarf the scarf is worn away, uh, each of each committed crime. Not, I'm just so bad at reading on a computer. I do apologize. Uh, no speck is left of their habitual stain, but pure either, but but the pure either of the soul remains. So they have their own purgatory essentially in pagan Rome. Now you have uh, oops, in uh, pagan Egypt. This has got pagan Egyptian religion. Subsequently, sub subsequently, the same doctrine of purgatory was inculcated, but once when this once but when once this doctrine of purgatory was admitted into the popular mind, then the door was opened for all manner of priestly extortions. It says uh, prayers to the dead ever go hand in hand with purgatory, but no prayers can be completely effectuous without the imposition of the priests. Hmm, kind of like the Catholic priests having to for forgive your sins. You can't go to heaven without that. You can't go to heaven without the Catholic priest forgiving your sins. Where are they getting that from? Pagan Egyptian religion. It doesn't have any basis in scripture. It has basis in pagan Egyptian religion. Having to go to the priest to have your sins forgiven and be allowed into heaven or the afterlife. Uh, and no priestly functions can be rendered unless there is Let's there be special pay for them. Therefore, in every land, we find the pagan priesthood, quote, devouring widows, houses, and, quote, making merchandise of the tender feelings of sorrowing relatives. Yeah, you, like, read about that in Second uh, Peter chapter... Let me just check the scripture, actually, to make sure I have the right scripture reference. It's Second uh, Peter, I believe it's chapter 2. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 3. Yeah. 
It says, but there are false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, kind of like baptismal regeneration or, you know, uh, work salvation, which is what the Catholics believe, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness uh, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Exactly. The Catholic priests are no different than the pagan Egyptian priests. They're, they're, they're all the same. I mean, he, even the Jesuit symbol, IHS, is the Egyptian the Egyptian trinity, Isis, Horus, Set. Um, so it says, uh, attending feelings of sorrowing relatives, sensitively alive to the immortal happiness of the beloved dead. From all quarters, there is one universal testimony as to the burdensome character and the expense of the post-humanist devotions. Yeah, exactly how Catholics do the exact same thing. You know, devotions to the dead, prayers to the dead, de pray prayers to basically get people out of hell, which has no basis in God's word, but does have basis in paganism. Egyptian paganism, Roman paganism, Greek paganism, you name it. One of the oppressions under the under the under which the poor Romanists in Ireland uh, grew in is the periodical special devotions for which they are required to pray. When death is carried away, when death has carried away one of their inmates of their dwelling, not only are there funeral services and funeral dues for the repose of the departed at the time of the burial, but the priest pays repeated visits to the family for the same purpose, uh, which entail heavy expense, beginning with that, it, uh, what is called the ma the month's mind, quote the month's mind, that in that is, a service on behalf of the deceased when a month after the death has been elapsed. Something entirely similar to this had evidently been the case in ancient Greece. So yeah, it just Catholicism is just borrowing these practices from pagan religions. You know, the priest comes and has to basically make an atonement for your dead family member. It's no different. I mean, you can see why a lot of these Catholic Bibles will get rid of Hebrews chapter 10, because Hebrews chapter 10 condemns the Catholic priesthood. Hebrews chapter 10 describes the Old Testament priest having to do a continual sacrifice to atone for sins and how Jesus Christ was that one-time sacrifice. Actually, let me just show you the scriptures because I don't want to leave any stone unturned. But basically how Jesus Christ was that one-time sacrifice and how how he, it wasn't like the priest had to continually go to the uh, altar every single time and continually give an offer for sins. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh... Yeah, Hebrews chapter 10, I'll start at verse number 9. Then said he, Lo, I will come and do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, and he will establish the second, and that he may establish the second. Not good at reading on a computer. By the which uh, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It happened, it's a one-time event, like John 19.30 says. It is finished. It's not a continual sacrifice, unbloody sacrifice, at the pagan Catholic Mass. But look at verse 11. And the priest standeth, uh, and every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering sometimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Exactly, that's what your Catholic priest does at the Mass. He's offering sacrifices, but can never take away sins. But this man, after, or sorry, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Exactly, one time sacrifice. It was a once and done event, not a continual unbloody sacrifice. Uh, I think you go down to, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I think it's Hebrews chapter 9 is a good one as well. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 9 is a pretty good chapter. The whole chapter, I mean, I'd say from verse 11 to verse 28 is a pretty good one. But here's actually a really good one to refute the, uh, the whole, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 25 to 28 destroys the Roman Catholic priesthood. You can see why a lot of Catholics don't like Hebrews 9 and Hebrews 10. It says uh, in verse 25, uh, Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. And it says, um, uh, so what, what it's basically saying is that if Jesus Christ was like the high priest, then it says in verse 26, this is what would happen. Uh, For then must he have suffered, must he have often suffered since the beginning, sorry, sorry, that for then must not having a trouble time reading this. I'm just, I'm not good at reading on a computer. It messes up my eyes. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. 
Yeah, if he was like the high priest, he would have to be continually offered kind of like a Catholic mass. But he appeared once and took away sins once. Verse 27, as, and, as the, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Look at verse 28. For Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look, that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Your Roman Catholic priesthood is destroyed in those uh, four verses. Verse, uh, Hebrews 9, verses 25 to 28. Destroys your whole Roman Catholic priesthood. Because the priest has to continually offer Christ every single, quote-unquote, offer Christ every single Sunday at Mass. But Jesus Christ, if that was the case, he would be, if that was the case, he would still be on the cross suffering. But it happened once. It's a one-time event. But Catholics are basically crucifying Jesus Christ every single Sunday. They're just re-crucifying him. That's all they're, they're all they're doing. Yeah, but Hebrews chapter nine verses twenty five twenty five through twenty eight destroys the Roman Catholic priesthood. But anyway, so it says um, something entirely similar to this uh, had evidently been the case in ancient Greece. For says Muller in his history of the Dorians, quote the Argives sacrificed on the thirteenth day. Hmm. You know, I guess like 13 is an unlucky number in some superstitions, to Mercury as the conduct, conductor of the dead. In India, and burdensome and burdensome are the services of the Sradada, sur, I can't say that word in Indian, sorry about that. Uh, especially uh, his services are funeral, uh, upsquise, ups sorry. I'm just not good, at, like, I hope you just bear with me, I'm just not good at reading on a computer. But it says basically that, that they are for the repose of the dead and for the securing of the due efficiency of these is inculcated that, quote, the donations of cattle, land, gold, and silver, and other things, quote, uh, or unquote, and it should be made by man himself at the approach of death or, quote, if he be too weak by an, another in his name. So in other words, uh, they had to have a co-mediator in Hindu Indian, in, uh, Hindu -Indian uh, theology. Basically, kind of like how Catholics have their co-mediator named Mary, the pagan Hindus have to have their co-mediator if they can't afford to like pay for their own salvation. They have to have a co-mediator do it in their name. It's nothing more than just Roman. It's where the Roman Catholics get their pagan heresies from. Uh, so it says uh, this is from the Asiatic researches. It says wherever we look, uh, the case is ne is nearly the same in Tartary. Quote the Gurjama. Gur Gurjumai, Gurjumai, hope I'm saying that right, uh, or Prayers to the Dead, uh, says the Asiatic Journal, quote, are very expensive. In Greece, says Sudas, quote, the greatest and most expensive sacrifice was the mysterious sacrifice called Telti, unquote, a sacrifice which, according to Plato, quote, was offered for the living and the dead and was supposed to free them from all evils to which the wicked are liable and when they have left this world, unquote. And it says, uh, in Egypt, expectations of the priests for funeral dates and masses, <laughs> masses, like I use that wording right there, for the dead were far from being uh, trifling. Quote, the priest, unquote, says Wilkinson, quote, introduced the people to expand large sums on the celebration of funeral rites. And it says, and many who barely, who had barely sufficient to obtain the necessary necess necessaries of life were anxious to save something for the expenses for the expenses of their for their death uh, for beside the embelling process which sometimes cost a talent of silver or 250 pounds of english money the tomb itself was purchased at the immense at an immense expense and numerous demands were made upon the state of the deceased for the celebration of prayer and other services of the soul unquote these ceremonies un, uh, quote unquote uh, we find him elsewhere saying that uh, consisted, so it says, quote, consisted of a sacrifice similar to those offered in temples, vowed for the deceased one to one or more gods, so you have Osiris or Anubis or any others connected with the Amenti. Then it says, look at this, incense and uh, libation are also presented, and a prayer was sometimes read in the relations of and friends being present as mourners. They even joined their prayers to those of the priest. The priest who officiated at the burial service was selected from the great pontiffs. I like that wording right there. Interesting wording from the, for the pagan Egyptians who wore leopard skin but at various rites were performed by one of the minor priests due to the mummies. 
uh, previous to their being lowered into the pit of the tomb. After the ceremony, indeed, they continued to be administered as inter intervals as the Long family paid for their performance, unquote. So you get the whole picture, is that basically these, the thing of prayers for dead people and trying to pray to intercede for dead people and having a mediator for dead people comes from paganism. Egyptian paganism, Greek paganism, Hindu paganism, and Roman paganism. That's where the Catholics get their doctrines from. Roman Catholicism is pagan religion repackaged. And I do apologize, I had a hard time reading this. I'm just not good at reading on a computer. It's just something I'm just not good at. So hope you're able to bear with me, but this is just blatant examples of the Catholic Church taking pagan practices and Christianizing them. Because all, that's all Satan can do. When Satan started the Roman Catholic Church, he just simply took pagan religions and tried to Christianize them. So yeah, Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. Roman Catholicism is a occult, Babylonian, pagan, false religion, and it is satanic. That's all it is. It's, a, it's simply just a counterfeit. It's one of Satan's counterfeits to Bible-believing Christianity. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.